I've had a Cobra S1 printer for about two months now. I got it April 16th, so I'm a little short. Uh, for reference, I came from an Ender 3. I had that Ender 3 for about four-ish years, and while it was very reliable in the end, I had to put in a ton of work and time and effort and in learning into making it a reliable machine. The bed springs had to be replaced with tighter, stronger coils. I installed a VL touch, which was difficult because my um, board was 8-bit, so there wasn't any firmware for it, and the firmware that was out there for it didn't have enough onboard memory for all the features, so you had to get these specialized firmwares for the 8-bit boards and the VL touch, uh, and it's just, it was a nightmare. But I got it at the end where it was printing extremely reliably, and I might have to level it every once in a while, but I really didn't have any failed prints. Um, it was a good time. So I'm seeing all these new faster printers and the thing that put it on YouTube, like the reviews, and what put it over the edge for me to buy one was I had the Ender 3 in that closet behind me. And it was probably like 55, 60 decibels while printing more, I don't know, it was freaking loud. And 8-bit crappy stepper motors, burr, 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 all day. I was printing like 14 hours a day for like a week, seven days straight, and I kept hearing that noise when it was no longer um, on. And at that point, I realized I'm hearing this thing in my sleep. I need to get rid of it. I can't live with this in my house anymore. It was so, so loud all day. And so I'm looking at Cobra S1 because I don't want to spend $1,200 on an AMS from Bamboo. And I'm like, okay, if the Cobra can do it, it's an AMS, it's heated, it's so much cheaper, surely this is worth a shot. So I have the S1. I wasn't able to actually use the thing right after getting it at first. Um, this thing is much bigger than an Ender 3. And I had like crafted my space around that Ender 3. So it was in the closet. I had all my stuff there. I had to move all my printing stuff downstairs, which means I needed to do a lot more cleaning and sorting and organizing so I could have a big wide open space to make a home base for this thing. And so I get there and I do it and this is probably like a, a week or two after I get the thing. And I want to mention I ordered off of Amazon because this was like tariff era. And I guess we still, still are tariff era. But there was a lot of uncertainty about shipping more than there is now, I would think. And I wanted safe return policies if this thing never showed up, whatever. So I get it through Amazon for about $700 out the door. That comes with four rules of spillment, rolls of spillment, taxes included, um, I think it's a fair price for what I got. And, and especially paying a little bit of a premium to have that Amazon guarantee. So I get it set up and I start printing and everything is pretty great. So I first print a poop chute bin for the, um, the purges that it does, um, the film it swaps. I print a couple like train track adapters for my kid, works great. Um, I'm fixing my blinds. I need a little specialized hook that fits in a very, as a very particular curve and angle. I print a hook. It works great. The thing is so much faster, so much quieter, enclosed, AMS. Like I can choose which color I want to print with every print and I don't have to like heat the thing up and do a cold pull and snip. It's just like so much better. Right. Um, and where I start to get into trouble is I'm printing deck dividers. I play Magic, right? So um, they're just they're basically cards that have labels on the top and it's multi-material. So let's say like goblins up top, right? Black plastic, white text. And I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot of banding, right? It's almost kind of like tiger striping, like um, bumps in my prints with this. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? I level my print a bunch. I try, you know manually uploading G code and just kind of like suspicious woo woo like will anything help this thing like work like I'm just you know I'm basically chanting at it and hoping for it to work at this point and I keep printing stuff like I print this protractor that I think came out like pretty good like fine details there the smooth faces all that actually handy when I'm just like hand sketching out something um, and but what really gets me is I start printing these light boxes. And there's this guy on YouTube who 
does this amazing tutorial here on how he 3D modeled a box that you put LEDs and then you can custom design your face plates and have these awesome light up. Um, I'll just go forward here. I don't know if there's a finished product in this one, but you basically put this thing together and it looks really cool. His tutorial is also really great from learning fusion modeling, bamboo, or not bamboo, but orchid slicer, all this stuff. And I print mine, and this is what I get. Um, if I get a flashlight at an angle, you might be able to see just how rough that is. Um, especially, you're going to hear it in a way that it's, it's, it's bad, right? Um, and so I get kind of obsessed about this. I'm like, why is this printing so freaking rough, right? It's like a little mountain range on there. And the front face is generally good. I'm dealing with a little under extrusion that I fixed by changing the base flow rate for the first layer to like 102% or something like that. And that closes the pinhole gaps. Um, but it, the more you increase settings like that, the worse this unevenness gets on the top of the um, print. So, you know, I, I'm looking at this guy's genera box. I should call him out by name because this stuff is really good. Uh, Rev Hazlitt, okay? This guy, cannot recommend him enough. And, and, you know, he's talking about quality. I was like, okay, well, he's on bamboo, and, like, I'm going to have to figure this out. And I start reading, and I find, like, custom firmware because I on the, my Ender, I had Octoprint. And that allowed me to remote upload G-code, and I could use the camera on the Raspberry Pi to monitor the print. I had a decent setup there. Uh, and man, so many cables everywhere on the Ender 3 and everything is actually managed on this uh, Cobra, which is fantastic, I have to say. So I'm reading about Wrinkles, which is the custom firmware. And I should bring this up just so people have Wrinkles uh, Cobra S1. It's this GitHub repo. Uh, you basically put something on a flash drive and you install some stuff and what you get out of it is main sale for one which is a UI that allows you to connect to your printer um, and this has a lot of great features so webcam print upload e-stop all this stuff <clears throat> and while I'm looking into this I also find this guy this guy is systematically printing with his new Cobra and running into a lot of the same issues I am. Uh, just prints are uneven, print to print. It's just unpredictable what's gonna happen. The first layer universally looks like crap. This video he's showing under extrusion, he's printing sheet after sheet, uh, trying, you know, like uploading G code versus printing remotely and all this stuff. And he doesn't get to any good solutions here. Um, and I'm following this guy, and then he has a comment, I think, in that last video that says, hey, you can level this out. So he builds a probe that manually levels it, he, that he mounts to the print head, and he sees that he has like seven layers of height difference, highest spot versus lowest spot. And somebody in the comments says, hey, you can modify your printer um, by, you modify the level of the bed by turning the lead screws and making the gear slip. And if you make the gear slip individually, you can like raise and lower different parts of the bed uh, in a way that you can't do otherwise. So this guy shows how to do it by loosening a set screw on a tensioner so that you can push this spring, the tension on the belt goes away, and then you can hold the belt in place and turn the lead screw gears and cause a slip. And each click of a slip is about one layer you're adjusting. And so I watch this, I'm like, okay, this guy has something that guaranteed is a mechanical linkage to start tweaking this thing, right? And so I was gonna install wrinkles, wrinkles anyway, and so I did, and this is the UI running on my printer. It has this great feature that Octopi had a height map. And I can see the probed bed of my printer 
which is really, really great. Because that guy had to build a jig and have a caliber, I don't know what the term is, to get that bed level data, whereas I get it for free here. And I wanna show you where I started. This is before doing the gear skip. I had 1.2 millimeters of height difference. So bottom left here is like if you're facing the printer and it's the bottom left of the print bed. And I tried to keep that consistent throughout all these screenshots. This is bad. This is six layers of shift. That's unacceptable. Um, just bad, right? So the first thing I do is like, okay, well, I'm going to start skipping the gears. And so I'm iterating over it. I think it's my first iteration. I way overshoot it, obviously. Uh, I think I just brought that one down way too much. I think I was trying to get one skip at a time. I got a bunch of skips and it was like YOLO. I'll just randomly set it. Looks like I brought one side down way too much. And the lead screws basically form a triangle. There's one at the back and two on the closest side of the print bed to you. So just for reference, you're basically modifying positions of a triangle in space, the, the vertices of a triangle in space to modify the, the level of the square bed that sits on top of it, right? So I started off like this, and then it goes like this, and then I start to dial it in a little bit. Okay, now I'm down to 0.84 layers. This is pretty good, I'm under three layers. And then I'm kind of dialing it in up and down, up and down. And I think I stopped about here, about point, uh, about two layers shift across the entire bed. And this wasn't good enough for me. So I keep trying to tweak it, and I'm making it worse. Um, I've hit the point where the easy gains are lost, and now I'm trying to get a little more precise. And something to go along with this is before I was doing any of this, I was printing those test layers just like Doug does stuff. I don't know if I name dropped him before. Doug does stuff is the guy that has a printer on the side and was going scientifically down this. Um, this is a solid print. I have the tiger striping over extrusion or the nozzles too close to the bed here. If I hold it up to the light, it does look like the nozzles too close to the bed because the high points are thicker than the nice level plastic and the low points are thinner. So. Uh, I Google it and that's just like a pattern. So that was before really I did any leveling and skipping. Uh, let me just double check my timestamp. This first one I did was uh, on the 29th at 11.29. Oh no, this was actually after I did the first gear skips. Okay, so after I do gear skips, my levels are looking, my test prints are do doing really well. And so I keep messing with it. One thing I notice uh, after I do another level, I'm probably like, about my point four is that my prints didn't really get any better. And I'm floating around point six as I'm making things worse. And now I'm getting under extrusion in the middle where I didn't have it before. Um, and yeah, you can just see like, it's just not great. And then I'm like, oh, well, you know what? This yellow PLA I'm using is actually PLA plus. And there's a profile for this. It's like eSun, AnyCubic, whatever, PLA plus. And so I print just like a little corner at first, and I still have this. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can try to level it again. I just stopped after I saw this because the uh, the over extrusion nozzle to close to the bed was still there. And so I'm down to 0.4 and then 0.6. I'm just back and forth, and I get up to like 0.7. And I'm doing these prints, and I'm getting just the stuff that's literally falling apart on me. And this is the PLA Plus profile again. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to stop using PLA Plus profile because things got way worse after that. And it's about this point where I'm like, okay, no matter what I do, all these different um, screenshots I'm showing you, zero, zero, top left is always in the same spot. And I'm getting to stuff like this, where I'm like, okay, it almost feels like there's a bit of an L shape on the bed where it's just raised in the middle, dead center, and it kind of goes to the right side of the bed. But it's not really on the corners anything I can directly control with this triangle-based adjustment anymore. So I was like, you know what? This bed, if I push on it, it's a little flexible. What if I just pull on a side and I get a really good result from that, honestly? Like I push it down, I torque it, whatever. I think I pull one end up and the other end down and I go from 0.7 to 0.4. I'm like, okay, well, like clearly better. I do that again, I overshoot it, but like my overall magnitude isn't terrible. I end up getting down to 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 0 0.48, 0 0.49, 0 0.50, 0 0.51, 0 0.52, 0
point and so this is just iteration i'm down to point three three and i'm like okay so between skipping gears and actually torquing the far corners of the bed a little bit that are away from the set screws i got this thing pretty well consistently at under two layers of diff um, between high and low points but my prints aren't getting any better i still have all of these freaking ripples everywhere so at that point, I'm just kind of going crazy. I'm past Amazon's return period by this point because it took me so long to get a spot for this place in my basement. I'm doing these light boxes. Another thing I found recently is on the light boxes, here is the super rough surface, right? You can see all that. I used um, wet iron top layer on Orca Slicer and the inside of this is actually super duper smooth now. I'm really impressed with how good it looks. The only problem is, as you can see here, the purple gets smeared by this. So it's a bit of a trade-off. One thing I also realized was that a lot of the quality issues I'm seeing when I'm backlight this actually come from the textured bed of the printer. It's a spring steel PEI coated print um, plate and there's no smooth side on it. My Ender 3, I bought a print plate, a spring steel, and one side was textured, one side was smooth. They don't do that on this Cobra, and it's like 25 to $40 to get a new print plate off of Amazon or eBay. And so, just something that doesn't make any sense to me. I think overall, I'm upset that this printer has these issues, but none of my functional prints suffer for it because this rippling, the minute I do any support and then another top layer, uh, that defect just melts away. It's only when I'm laying down layer on layer on layer that I start to see these issues accumulate, kind of like Stockton Rush building the Ocean Gate. But if I have any support material uh, or infill, basically, this all goes away. Like the top finishes on this is great because this is a little thick. Any functional print I'm doing, I'm like printing little brackets and stuff for like this little telescoping finger pointer thing. But like this bracket, uh, amazing print quality. I really like it. So uh, it's way faster than the Ender. I was consistent and decent. It's not. I think I can compensate for it. It's going to cost money. Um, when I think about how much it costs me, I'm still saving a lot of money over bamboo. Uh, but part of me wishes I would have just bought the nicer machine. Actually, correction, the P1S with the combo, I was looking at the Pro combo, just the base P1S with the AMS included is $900. So actually the Delta there is maybe only 250 And I would say at that point, actually, the Bamboo is just a better buy. Um, buy the Bamboo. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, I will live with what I have, um, but probably should have bought the Bamboo.